I'm Brian with MPN. We're back here in the garage studio with Project X. The goal for today is to fu finish assembly on our jet pump and get it back into Big Blue over here. Now you notice I have a bunch of parts thrown out in front of me here. We've got the jet pump and the cone and nozzle back from paint and we have the impeller back off of here again and there is a good reason for that. We have decided to go a different direction. Um, I have here the stock cast aluminum unit and a soulless stainless steel impeller. Uh, obviously there's a big visual difference between these two impellers. But why does someone use a stock impeller over a stainless steel one? That's easy. It's a different level of performance. It's just like changing out gears and a differential on your truck or your muscle car. It will give you a different balance between acceleration and top speed. The stainless impeller is a bit stronger and should hold up to a bit more punishment. These are both susceptible to debris being sucked through the jet pump. They can both be damaged. We believe that the stainless steel unit here is going to give us the best balance between acceleration and top speed and give us really what we're looking to get out of this jet ski, which is a fun ride and a big smile. So now, <clears throat> I'm going to reassemble all of the jet pump and I will move on to our wear ring, which is the part of the jet pump housing that goes between the intake grate, which is still on the jet ski, and the intermediate or the bearing housing right here in front of me. Let's get back to reassembly. This season of Project X is brought to you by SBT, the largest supplier of high quality jet ski parts in the world. Let's start off firsthand with our new Solus impeller. You might remember from the jet pump episode, I did not have the correct installation tool for the Solus impeller. Our new impeller, however, did come with that tool that slides and notches in just so. And I still have my drive shaft counter hold tool here. I'm gonna take this over to the bench vise and torque this down real quick and we will be right back. Now that the soulless impeller is on and it's torqued down, it's time to put the ceiling cone on the front. This is a really easy process. I'm gonna put just a dab of marine grease onto the inner and outer O-rings on this. We can slide this right down the drive shaft and into our new impeller. And Solus is kind enough to pre-apply blue thread locker right onto these screws. We don't have to go crazy here. I'd say run until it makes contact, then an eighth of a turn. Somebody, possibly you, is going to need to get these back out someday. And that wraps up our new impeller. Now it's time to move on to the wear ring. Wear rings are, let's say controversial. Everybody has an opinion on these things. There are two different types that are available for our SVHL. There is the aluminum housing here, and there is the plastic one. Everybody seems to have a different opinion on which one is better and for which application. Wear rings are a wear item, like brake pads on your car, like tires. It is something that will have to be replaced from time to time. It will also need to be replaced if the jet pump draws in debris, causing damage to the inside of the wear ring or to the outside of the impeller. Now, the stock units that come from Yamaha and, and other manufacturers, they are aluminum housings with a stainless steel insert ring that is pressed in like a, like a sleeve in, a, in, a, in an engine block. The issue that normally comes with that style of construction is galvanic corrosion. That is corrosion that forms between two unlike metals, aluminum and stainless steel. That corrosion applies pressure inward on the stainless steel insert. That means the diameter, the inner diameter gets smaller and it gets closer to the impeller. So what are the advantages or disadvantages from one design to another? If you're in a high performance application, these plastic, wear rings, they can fit, they can run a tighter tolerance to the jet pump. This is advantageous in some cases. 
but of course they are still vulnerable to that to damage from debris being pulled through the tank. These stainless units are significantly more expensive. They do, in most cases, offer a better overall service life. If you're looking for bang for the buck, go for the nylon. These aren't, like, like I said, these aren't, they're, they're much more cost effective and they're not that labor intensive to replace, especially if you're handy. If you are not a do-it-yourselfer and you're looking to have someone do it for you, the stainless wear ring may be the better option because you will get m more for your investment, more service life, more lifetime. However, both of these will still require some common sense practices like trying to flush out the, serv the jet pump when you pull off of a beach, for instance, by grabbing the back of the jet ski and jumping it up and down in the water. It helps to push some of that sand and dirt and debris out of the pump. All of these things can help get maximum service life out of either of these units. Now for our Project X, we're going with the stainless steel and stainless wear ring. So our last little formality step here is I want to check tolerance between the outside of the impeller blade and the inside of the wear ring. As, you, as you're putting the wear ring on, there is a right and wrong way here. We have the water passage from the water basket over here on the bearing housing that needs to be lined up and there are dowels that will help this set right into place. Now this is of course a relatively tight tolerance unit and according to my shop manual my tolerance around the blade should be 13 thousandths. It's 0 0.013 and that is bang on. I'll double check that I can't fit the 015 in there and I cannot. All right and that means we are good to go with reassembly. With our pump nozzle all reassembled it's time to get this jet pump back together and back into big blue. I've been looking forward to this. Now, there are, as with anything, there's a number of different ways that this can be done. I need to seal the wear ring surface up against the intermediate or the bearing housing, and I need to seal the front part of it into the intake grate, the transom uh, underneath the jet ski. Shop manual tells me to, to apply the RTV to the transom. It doesn't talk at all about what to do back here. I'm of the mindset that I want to make sure that this whole surface is has an even coating of sealant, but n not so thick that it will block, potentially block, our water passage. I'm gonna start by laying a bead in the groove. That we're not looking to go crazy here and go too thick. It's a very thin, but even coat. It's finally time to get this jet pump back into Big Blue. We're gonna start with a little bit of marine grease on the splines. And then we have to do the same sealing job here on the transom. So just like on the bearing housing, I'm going to squeeze out a light even coating all along the surface of the transom here. And then I'll come back and smooth it all down with my finger. So we want a light and even coat. We don't want the sealant to come squeezing out in every direction once we tighten this down. Especially not when we have a water passage to worry about. I'm gonna go the opposite way here. I'm gonna go and put an even bead around the front of the wear ring here. 
and then we will bolt this all together. All right, and with that, now we're ready to guide our drive shaft into the bearing housing. If you have trouble getting it to set in place like I just did, you can grab the impeller with your fingertips and just spin it slightly in either direction. Help line up the splines. There, I found my dowel. So for our four, I'm sorry, five wear ring bolts, we're gonna apply bit of white thread sealant to each one. So now that everything is bolted back up, I had temporarily installed two bolts in the jet pump to hold everything together. I'm gonna take them out now so I can apply my final coat of sealant to the cone the nozzle and then we can start reconnecting our control cables our water flag hose and all of the other goodies same goal here thin or uh, an even bead around the seat and then real thin on the mating surface bottom bolts in, it's time to shift our focus to the mount, the support bracket up top. Got these bolts cleaned off camera, time to apply our new thread sealant. We can slide the bracket into place, get these bolts cinched down. I'm at that point in the project now where I'm so close to the end, I can feel it. This is the time to slow down, think about what you're doing, and make sure you don't forget something important. So this is our... Ah. This is our trim control. Steering. Next, and that one also can get a bit of marine grease around it. A bit of thread sealant near the top of the threads for where it will bottom out. And now, flat washer and nut. You may remember from when we were disassembling, we noticed that our water flag hose was completely ripped off, just like the speedometer. Uh, we have our new one on here. We already have it installed onto the pump cone. Next up is the rubber panel that this hose goes through. We need to at least hang that in place. And then it's just a simple matter of sliding on our clamp and pushing the hose up onto the fitting here underneath the hull. And this, of course, this is the water flag. This is that signature Yamaha feature. It sends a stream of pressurized water up into the air. The idea is it makes the jet ski more visible out on the lake to other drivers, riders. We have more thread sealant to apply here. I'll only be installing four of the bolts that hold these rubber panels on, two in each, um, for 
for now because we won't be installing our ride plate until after we have the wrap applied onto big blue here. All right. And with that, we are finally ready for the last piece of the puzzle here. We've got six bolts that hold our reverse bucket. Quick dab of thread sealant to each one. And dare I say it, this is beginning to look like a jet ski again. Quick double check. With that, we should be all set here. Put the reverse bucket back up here and reattach the spring and the control cable. With that, now finally the reverse cable is attached. Now it's snug and we can pull the spring back onto its post. With the reverse bucket now on, this is a wrap for us today, pun intended. We will come back to install the ride plate once the jet ski has been wrapped, but I don't want to, I wanna wait until after the wrap is done to then install the ride plate. We will then also secure the speed sensor to the ride plate at that time. But for us today, we're signing off. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Brian Sexton. I hope to see you in the next episode.